the only people who saw a lady of fatima were the three visionaries lucia jacinta and francisco one of the first questions asked of the children by the people was what did she look like for this the children would instantly reply she was very beautiful throughout the years many have attempted to represent that beauty of our lady in their works and the search for the perfect representation of our lady continued until one blessed man's work the work of art which resembled our lady the most in this video we are seeing the story of how the perfect statue of our lady of fatima came to be the chapel of the apparitions is a small chapel located in goa da area that was constructed in the year 1919 as a response to the request of our lady of fatima to the three young shepherd children i want to tell you that a chapel is to be built here in my honor the chapel was built on the exact spot of the apparitions however two years passed and there was still no statue in the chapel to represent our lady of fatima one of the many pilgrims of fatima a young pilgrim named gilberto fernandez dos santos decided to address this problem he took the responsibility to find a way to have made the very first fatima statue thus the young pilgrim visited different religious shops in lisbon to see if there was something that might represent our lady of fatima upon finding nothing he contacted casa fanceres a shop in the city of braga that was specialized in sacred art and then he explained his project to the owner finally the artist assigned to this task was jose ferreira tedim jose ferreira took this work very seriously he immediately saw descriptions of the apparitions he couldn't consult the only surviving seer lucia because she was too far away and was in an undisclosed convent artist jose ferreira also asked for descriptions from father manuel who had interviewed the three visionaries extensively during the apparitions then the artist went to different shops in porto looking at different statues of our lady popular in portugal at that time for inspiration Finally he settled on a statue of Our Lady of Lapa to use as a foundation for the project on May 13 in the year 1920 the statue was finished and delivered to the parish in Fatima Father Manuel Ferreira pastor in charge of the parish blessed it later on June 13 the statue was taken to the chapel and placed there this statue of Our Lady was one of the most beautiful and iconic statues representing our lady of fatima but still there are some minute details that were missing or details that were added which was not in the apparition sister lucia was not placed with this statue sister lucia wanted the clothing to be simpler without so many adornments draperies and plates thus the search for the perfect statue continued in the year 1946 john hafford the co-founder of the blue army of our lady of fatima took the effort to find the most precise and beautiful fatima statue he met sister lucia and showed her hundreds of pictures of the most beautiful statues of our lady of fatima he had seen in his travels he hoped that at least one statue would come close enough to our lady sister lucia considered each one attentively but said that none of them looked like our lady as she appeared at fatima thus once again the search continued father miglin was a dominican priest with a gift of sculpture though he produced many masterpieces this work of all his works has a more remarkable history the statue he crafted under the personal direction of sister lucia herself the first accurate representation of our lady of fatima In the year 1946, Father Meglin, at the age of 44, was teaching oratory at Providence College. During this time, with the permission of his superiors, he rented an old barn in the Old Neville section of Providence to serve as a studio. The original inspiration to sculpt the image of Our Lady of Fatima actually came from a commission. Six years earlier, at the first meeting of the Liturgical Society of the United States, Father Meglin had come into contact 
with the Rigali brothers from Depato Studios in Chicago. The Rigalis, who were in the business of making plaster replications of original works, approached Father Meglin to commission sculptures. Father Meglin could not accept their offer at that time, but now, six years later, having his own studio, he approached the brothers about their earlier proposal, and a formal contract was signed. It was agreed that Father Meglin would produce three sculptures for the Rigalis, one of the Blessed Virgin Mary, one of the Sacred Heart, and one of St. Joseph. At the suggestion of two of his classmates, Father Meglin decided that his Marian statue would be a representation of Our Lady of Fatima. He also completed his first version of the statue of Our Lady of Fatima, and his work was approved by the Regalis. But then Father Meglin expressed to his friends that the statue would not be an authentic representation of the children's visions, and he wanted to make a statue that most resembled Our Lady of Fatima as seen by the visionaries. At that time, a woman asked Father Meglin, why don't you go to Portugal to see Sister Lucy? With this idea in his mind, Father Meglin informed the Regalis. The Regalis gave their approval and even offered to pay for the trip. Having received the permission of his superiors, Father Meglin flew to Lisbon in the February of 1947, together with a letter of introduction from Cardinal Spellman to Cardinal Bishop of Lisbon. Cardinal Serigira welcomed Father Meglin and in return wrote him a letter of introduction to Bishop Don Jose de Silva of Leira Fadima. It is Bishop de Silva who determines who would have permission to visit Sister Lucia, who was living 200 miles north of Fadima in a convent at Villa Nova de Gaia. It was a permission rarely given, but Father Meglin was granted his request. Finally, he made Sister Lucia. Father Meglin showed Sister Lucia the statue he made of Our Lady of Fatima. After careful examination of the statue, Sister Lucia told him that the statue was inaccurate. Up to this point, Father Meglin had thought that only minor alterations would be necessary, but now it seems like he should start making the statue from scratch. With another permission, Father Meglin remained at the convent to produce an entirely new statue under the direction of Sister Lucia. Sister Lucia was not easy to please. Corrections came readily without any concern for how hard they may be to follow. One time, Sister Lucia told Father Meglin to make Our Lady's face narrower. Then she said that the mouth needs to be higher. At this point, Father Meglin thought to himself, moving a mouth higher on a clay model would mean reshaping the whole area. Sister Lucia was relentless. Once Sister Lucia said through her translator, I can tell him I like it if I don't. Father Meglin said in his book, The Vision of Fatima, Sister Doris spent most of her time standing by the statue, closely supervising the modeling and frequently interrupting for corrections. For these, she sometimes touched the clay herself with her fingers or with a modeling tool, an attitude which for anyone else would have irritated me to the core. I had set aside all my particular preferences and prejudices to do everything exactly as she wanted it done. Finally, the sculpture was successfully completed. The new image was fully approved by Sister Lucia and Sister Lucia took a photograph beside the completed model of Father Meglin. Then a huge replica of the image of Our Lady was produced. Today, the statue appears in front niche of the facade of the Basilica of the Sanctuary of Fatima. This was the first statue that most resembled Our Lady of Fatima. In the year 1947, the Bishop of Leida Fatima wished to make the apparitions better known, so he formulated a plan for a traveling pilgrim statue of Our Lady of Fatima. Also, the purpose of the Pilgrim Virgin Statue Tour was to bring the graces of Fatima and Our Lady's message of hope, peace and salvation to many millions of people. So the bishop asked the sculptor Joseph Ferreira Tedim, who made the statue of Our Lady of the Rosary of Fatima, to carve a statue of Our Lady of Fatima. Sister Lucia was asked 
to advise the sculptor so that the statue would resemble as closely as possible to Our Lady as she appeared at Fatima. Mr. Tatum's work was finished and blessed on May 13 in the year 1947 and the result was spectacular. This statue was destined to travel the world as a pilgrim. As soon as Our Mother began her pilgrimages, the reception was overwhelming. Mr. Hafford saw that the statue would be scheduled in Europe for many years before she could go to America. Thus, he petitioned the bishop to have a second pilgrim statue made to travel the Western Hemisphere. So another statue was made with the same instructions of Sister Lucia. This second statue made by Mr. Tatum was even more spectacular and resembled Our Lady the mostest than the first statue. The second pilgrim statue was blessed on October 13th in the year 1947.